Hello, students from all over the world. My name is Adriana Guena. I am the assistant director of international programs with Mac George School of Law here in Sacramento, California. I am excited to have a special guests today who will share their unique experience while they did their LLM program at Mac George School of Law. You're going to learn firsthand advice, tips, so you can also be successful in your journey. I also want to share that I graduated from McGeorge School of Law in 2012, so a little back, and I am back here working with international programs to um, help you to achieve your goal, to achieve your dream, to come to United States of America in beautiful California, Sacramento, and pursue a master's of law program. So there are a lot of steps, a lot of good tips that we're gonna be sharing with you today. And um, I also wanna say that you can send your question via chat box. I will be also sharing my email address where you can contact me uh, directly with your specific question. And uh, I'm just super excited because um, from an alumni perspective as well, I feel that Mac George School of Law has been a family to me. So I want to welcome our guests that are also part of the Mac George School of Law family. We all come from different countries, different cultures and backgrounds. And when we are here at school, we make friends, long lasting friends. Uh, and also, you know, we have our network opportunities, the connections that we make are very valuable for your future career. So with that said, I wanna hear about our guests because you know what? They have inspiring stories. They have um, also overcome uh, many obstacles to be here and they have been successful in everything they have done uh, so far and much more to come. So today we have two panelists. Uh, we have Carolina Hondon. She's originally from beautiful Colombia. She graduated in 2017 with an LLM in transnational business practice. Mm -hmm. She is an attorney, a licensed attorney in California, and she works at GWP Immigration Law Group in Las Vegas, Nevada. So, bienvenida, welcome, Carol, to our um, LLM alumni panel. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for the invitation. And we also have Juan Misael Gutierrez Rivera. He goes by Misael. He is originally from Guanajuato, Mexico. I hope I said it right. <laughs> and he recently graduated a uh, class of 2022. He uh, um, completed an LLM in US law and policy. And he just sat for the California bar exam. Fingers crossed, we are rooting for you, Misael and let's see what the future holds for you. Welcome to our uh, alumni panel. Thank you for having me. Beautiful. Thank you guys for being here with us today. Oh, obviously, we have some questions uh, that students always ask us. Now, you guys coming from different countries, right? You had some preparation to do in terms of thinking about your curriculum, your academic path. Right. So let me start with Carol. Carol, how did you plan your curriculum uh, when you first started, when you chose the transnational business practice? Did you have a plan in mind? Were you able to customize your uh, curriculum in order to best assist you uh, in your academic world as well as in your career? Tell us a little bit about your experience, Carol. Please. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a funny story because when I first started the program, my idea, I always wanted to do international law, like some sort of international law. So that's why my program, I, I choose the um, transnational business program. And uh, so at the beginning, when I sat down with, um, uh, at, back then it was Jocelyn, um, um, she asked me, okay, like, what's your plan? Do you want to take the bar? And I'm like, no, like, I don't want to take the bar. Like, this is like the bar for me was like huge, like another level. So I told her like, I want to stick to all the international classes. Mm -hmm. So I did all the international classes. Um, I took, I did pick contracts 
because um, my plan or my desire was to do international contracts, international transactions. So I was like, maybe this um, contracts class is gonna help me. And uh, I also ended up picking immigration as part of my program. Um, I don't know why I picked immigration back then. Like, honestly, I think it's just like God, because <laughs> through that classes that I ended up being here, working here. But um, uh, but yeah, like, uh, it's funny because I never really planned to stay in the United States. And here I am <laughs> five years later. <laughs> Five years. Um, but yeah, uh, you can you can plan your classes. You can you can take again. Like I was able to pick all my international classes uh, that I wanted, like business related. I think I was only there was one class that was mandatory for my program that was transnational business. I think it, that's the name of the class. I don't remember, but that's the only class that was uh, mandatory for my program. The other ones you were able to sit down and plan whatever you want to learn and just take your classes. Thank you, Carol. And I think that's it, right? It's being flexible because once you get here and you start looking at opportunities, like Carol said, she had not planned to stay in the United States, uh, but uh, thankfully, other doors opened up because of her hard work and she had a plan, right? And the plan was changed. She was flexible and she was adjusting as, uh, you know, uh, as the, the time went by. And of course, having a plan is important, but also remain flexible. Uh, it's, it's smart as well, right? Because you never know what the future holds, but yeah. uh, that's very great to hear. And just to emphasize, my friends, there are two mandatory classes nowadays. Mm -hmm. Carol, I think you may remember, we have the legal English. Oh, okay, yes. Okay. Which is a very important class for those, yeah. you know, international uh, professionals or students whose English is the second or third language. Mm -hmm. In other words, you may speak English, but you also need to learn it legal English, which is the legal terminology, how we can be addressed in court, how you write. So this is very important. The mm -hmm. other one that we have nowadays, uh, Carol, you may remember, or back in time, it was a little different. We have the LLM in legal writing research. Um, in other words, we teach you how to do research, how there is a format, there is a way that American lawyers, the way they talk, the way they uh, do negotiations, the way they write their petitions and memorandums, etc. So there is a formula we're going to be teaching you about, which is the IRAC, the issue, rule, and then analysis and conclusion. So there's a lot of tips that we're going to be um, helping the student, assisting the student, so they can, you know, uh, perform well during their LLM program. So Thank you for uh, reminding me of those two mandatory classes and also for the LLM in transnational business practice Then you would have that specific class to help you with your career. So that's very important. Now, Amizael, was it different for you? Did you have a plan? Did you have to change it? Or you were very set on a plan and that's what you uh, stuck with and you moved on with your plan? Yes, um, I definitely did my research before Going forward on the plan, I planned it like from start to end, and I knew what each um, each credential would help me out, maybe in the long run, or what type of opportunities would open up to. I would open up to. Um, obviously, considering my Spanish speaking skills, I also took um, immigration law, and um, I felt like. Coming to California, you know, there's around 39.2 Hispanic population here. So uh, there's a vast majority of Hispanics that are not being um, like they're not actually being um, helped in the legal field. So I'm, in addition to that, there's like around 3% lawyers out of like the whole 100% that are actually uh, Spanish speaking or Hispanics. So I felt that that was an area I would possibly go to. I'm not saying that I was going to, but it was another opportunity that I should take advantage considering my specific situation. Obviously there's other um, areas that I would like to, but I feel like I would not have an advantage there, but in this areas I would, and to start off, I mean, that's, that's the most important thing to, um, for me at least as a, to have a solid base that's that's the reason I took immigration. I also took intellectual property. 
um, because I knew I know that's where the well the future is going, especially that the technology is evolving so fast now and law is falling behind um, compared to technology. So, I mean, we also have Silicon Valley. So even geogra geographically, um, we're in the, in the spot to be especially studying intellectual property. That's merging with um, technology right now. Those are the two reasons I picked those courses. Obviously, um, we also have legal English, legal writing and analysis. They do really help out as a base um, and they help us to, to analyze and really understand how the analyzing works. Um, like doing analogical reasoning and deductive reasoning. Um, so those are the two main um, different types of analysis that we use here in the George School of Law. So you really understand how this works and you'll set yourself up for success. Another course I took is civil procedure because I know like I was practicing in Mexico, civil procedure it kind of merges with different types of laws and it's like the solid, another solid base mm -hmm. in law. Um, and it not only that, it also helps you to um, sit for the bar because it's a he heavily tested subject in the California bar. So I thought, well, if I take this class, it's something that I will not have to study so substantially because I would have some more, more um, other types of law that I would have to study, like constitutional law. I know it's complex and it's, and it's more abstract. And um, I just wanted to like reduce the, the, the amount of um, study I would have to actually put myself into. But there's no way around it. You, you, no way around it. You still have to um, do the, the hard work regardless. You're right. It is hard work. It is a transformative experience because if one thing I tell the student is that you're not going to be the same person. You come here with your dreams and hopes and your perception, your perspective of living in the United States, because it's also a cultural experience, right? You are trying to fit in. You're trying to understand how the laws are made, how the common law system in the United States works. I understand that some of us, some of us have, have come from countries where the civil law system is predominant or is the legal system in place. So we also have that challenge um, of learning how the common law system works. So that is also a challenge. Uh, but we also bring a lot to the program because for most of us, we already have the LLB, the Bachelors of Law from our countries. Some of us have been you know, attorneys or have practiced law before you came to the law school. So we do bring a lot of richness into the program because we bring the knowledge, we bring the culture, we bring the different perspectives. And speaking of different perspectives, I wanna ask at all, because we have a JD integrated classes, in other words, students will be taking classes with the American law students. In other words, you will have some classes with your foreigner uh, lawyers, you know, and classmates, but you will also absolutely will be integrated with the American law students because you need to learn from the best, you need to learn from the professors, you need to learn and be trained as a, a U.S. lawyer. And with that comes some challenges as well, because for most of us, English is our second or third language. Uh, perhaps in the beginning, there is a little bit of a uh, uh, lack of confidence, right? Because there's so much going on. It can be overwhelming at times, but it's also very rewarding. As I said, we come with a lot of knowledge, a lot of information to share. And I know American students are open. Some of them are open. And uh, for sure, the professors are very interested in learning more about our culture and also how we do law in our, back in our countries. But cut off for you, how was that integration into the American law student classroom. We have the Socratic method right here in the United States where you must be prepared. You never know where you're gonna be called on in class and, and that. How was it for your experience? Now looking back and reflecting the opportunities to improvise, to speak up your mind. And how have you overcome, you know, some of the insecurity, the beginning, huh? the confidence. How did you build yourself to be strong to be confident and do your best and be successful in your program. Tell us. 
Oh, I think, yeah, I think you're right. Like it can be intimidating, like sitting in a classroom where like usually, at least back in Colombia, classrooms are like the teacher or the professor is in front and everybody is like behind sitting, you know, like over here is like a circle and the professor is in the middle because it's like only that tells you how the conversation is, you know, only just thinking about how the rooms are built it just it just makes me think yeah it's because it's meant to be a place to speak to to like to initiate a conversation you know it's not like back in well at least back in my country like the professor will stand in the front and just speak for hours and you will only take notes and that's it you know uh, over here no over here you know that you need to speak that there was a conversation going on uh for some of the classes they like you have they, they will let you know when they're gonna call you out or call you on or well, call you out right and so you can be prepared like specifically for that class to be prepared because you know that the, the professor is gonna be like, asking you questions um but for some others like you could all be prepared like i mean you the only way to prepare was to read all the material before um, I think personally, um, yes, it was intimidating, but like the only way to overcome that is to jump in it, you know, like the only way to overcome your fears is to face them. <laughs> so, um, just, you know, raising your hand, if there is something that you really want to say, or there is something that you really feel like you want to say, like just raise your hand and speak up or, well, I have to say that one time. I was alone and I wasn't prepared for the class. And, you know, that's like the biggest fear for us. And, but I faced it. And I was after that, believe me, I was always prepared for the class. And yeah, like, it's not, I mean, it can be intimidating, but it's not like, I mean, at least I, I will say that at least with us, the international students, some professors try to be less um, strict, I will say. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very understanding, um, but that doesn't mean that um, they're like that doesn't mean that they're gonna be like that. They won't expect something from you. Like so, we need to do our part and study, and as much as we can. And then, Carol, in that situation, uh, did you use your improvisation? Because lawyers, right? We need to be able to improvise if you are in the yeah. court when the judge asks a question, whatever the situation might be, or the op opponent uh, attorney asks you a question or whatever the issue might arise, then you have to be ready for, you know, for improvisation. Did you use that? What was your, your st strategy? <laughs> uh, I mean, there were definitely classes where I was able to improvise or to just speak out of common sense. Uh, but for I remember this specific one time that I was called out and I wasn't prepared. Mm -hmm. I had to be honest with the professor and I had to be like, I'm sorry, like I, I wasn't prepared. Mm -hmm. And of course that like crushed my ego. I don't know everything. I was like, oh my gosh, I hate this. But <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I had to do it. Um, but and also it's a little bit, it was a little bit harder for me to try to just speak out of common sense, you know, like as we are, like lawyers, we sometimes just say things, but we think we try to make it, you know, what we are, we provide. But back then, like my English level wasn't that good. So it was a little bit harder for me to try to do um, that. So mm -hmm. that one time I did have to be honest with the professor and I was like, I'm sorry, I, I didn't prepare for the class and it was very embarrassing, but I got over it. <laughs> well, lesson learned. We learn as we go. And yeah. as I was saying, you know, it's a, an opportunity to also, to be honest, to speak up and, and then learn from it and do better. That's mm -hmm. why we always tell our students the place to make mistakes, which they're not really mistakes, I say with air quotes, is in the classroom. Once you are out of the classroom, you're a professional. You don't want to make a mistake in the class, in the courtroom, right? Or with your client. So this is the place to practice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, right? We need to leave the ego, you know, outside the classroom and really face and really challenge because um, it can be very challenging, but it's also very rewarding because you're protected mm -hmm. by the university, the school, and having the professors as your masters to guide you. 
Very nice. Thank you, Carol, for sharing. How about you, Ms. Ayal? Do you have a story or do you have something, a tip to share, you know, like the level of preparation for, you know, to be able to be in the classroom and if you are called on, you are ready to go? Well, well from my experience, obviously the, the Socratic method, it's, it really helps out a lot because it forces you to think by yourself, figure out the problem before you actually get uh, um, questioned on it. And before you even try to go to class, you already like know the answers. But like, even though if you do all the reading and you, you know, ask different students or go, go to office hours, I mean, it's still like, you're not gonna be 100% prepared. So um, regardless of um, how hard you try, I mean, it's always just good to keep on doing your good faith effort into um, being prepared and I've noticed there's like there's um, somewhat of students that do not get the, the answer correct or sometimes there is not even an answer correct. You can give an answer in so many ways and it, at the end of the day it's still correct, right? Um, but you definitely want to try to participate, get, get some involvement in the classroom just so all people notice you that you're there <laughs> and uh, well, this this type of um, teaching definitely helps. And well, what I did is I just did everything I was told to, and I just like expected <laughs> to do good. So, <laughs> well, well, I think he said something really important, and it was that sometimes there is not just one correct answer. Sometimes there is like many correct answers. So, and that's one of the biggest lessons that I got out of the whole program um and to bring it to my life professional and even like personal life you know we have so many perspectives like we like we are different worlds in, inside our minds and we have like so many perspectives and we can analyze analyze cases law situations completely different so it's very challenging but it was it was very interesting and um and very nice to to learn that experience there Yes, uh, I noticed um, with the uh, American students, I, so I hang with different groups and I've asked them the same question and everybody comes up with the like different, like they approach the same exact thing differently. Mm -hmm. Even though we're looking at the same thing, then I'll ask another person, you know, just to start comparing and see if, because you got to sometimes let your ego aside and be open to, there might be another better perspective on how to approach the same thing. But if you don't, if you think you're the only one that has the best thing, then I mean, you're just gonna limit yourself to actually try to improve. And that really helped me out a lot. Yeah. I love what you guys saying because I'm, I remember the hypotheticals, right? What if, what if this, yeah. what if that? What if we change the facts in the circumstances? Would, would the approach be different? Would the answer be different? And I tell these students again, it's, it's not you know, the black letter law, Yes, but also there's always the gray area, right? So not, not black nor white, there is always the gray area where we can argue in favor of our clients or whatever that might be the circumstance. So I think that's why I, I you know, we love the law in the sense that the ability that we have to argue yes or no, or maybe sometimes depending on the circumstances. So I appreciate that. And then of course, we talked about the classroom, but also outside the classroom. In my time, you know, and nowadays as well, we, we do encourage students to take advantage of the office hours. I don't know about you guys, how much will you use that, that ability to go and talk to a professor 101? I do remember back in my time, I used that because I had so many questions. Sometimes I wasn't confident to ask the questions during, you know, my class. Or it was something very particular that I wanted to hear the professor's perspective. So I did use the office hours because professors here have the open door policy. Within that time, they will be there to assist you. Any of you, did any of you get the, to use the office hours as a tool to be successful during your LLM program? Yes. Like, yes, use your office hours. Go and talk to professors as much as you want. Even if you, sometimes even if you just want to say hi and just, you know, make the professor know you, just go and do it like yes um it's helpful academically because yes like they will explain it to you um but also um 
just create contacts. I will say just, you know, like I, I created a really good um relationship with one with one professor and specifically and um, my immigration professor um she was the one who got me the job like she recommended me for the job that I'm on here right now and I'm like forever grateful um but also I have to recognize that I put my work on it you know like I will go to the office hours I will show my interest and that tells a lot of us as a person and professional I love as well I love what you're saying, Carol. This is very smart because you are strategically leveraging these relationships that you are creating, right? So your professors can also be your reference. They mm -hmm. know a lot of people. They are very well connected. And you're right, Carol. If you do not show your interest, the hard work, if you're not seen, you're not remembered. So I, I believe that you really maximize those relationships to your benefit and here you are giving it back to the students. So I love what you're saying about maximizing these relationships. Uh, Misael, do you agree? Did you have the same experience, similar experience, perhaps? Yes, um, I definitely encourage them if um, they, they attend or whatever course to go to office hours. Uh, as I mentioned about um, asking other students, I, I said this to see their approach on, on the topic, but if you want to get the answers, go to the professor, you know, um, because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are going to grade you and they perceive the law differently. And you must try to see how they are perceiving the, the law and that that's going to help you to know what they're asking for on a, on a real exam. And not only that, on, as Carol mentioned there, they really have a lot of contacts and they not only been in professors, but they also have careers um, and they've networked a lot and they can easily help you out and get, get on your feet. Great. It's maximizing those relationships. It's staying in touch with your alma mater like we're doing right now, bringing you guys over to celebrate each of you and also to really open many doors, right? We never know what lives we're going to touch by coming here, by sharing our unique transformative experience. This is great. And I always tell students, you know, we have an alumni network in 50 states here in the United States, as well as in 64 countries. That's a big deal in other words, that's a lot of relationships. And I'm happy to connect our prospective students from, you know, with alumni, people that have come before then, they've been successful and, you know, they can learn from and then they can help you. These are very successful people that, you know, uh, want to get back. And one way to give it back is to really um, mentoring, uh, coaching or supporting um, students that are coming, students that are new to the United States and also the LLM program. Uh, did you guys have any experience? In other words, I back in time i still you know i made friends we are all a big family we are family and also i am in touch with those uh my colleagues you know my classmates that have gone back to their countries all over the world we're still in touch so not only i have a friend virtually everywhere in the world but i also have a colleague you now someone in the in the law who can assist me if I need to make a phone call, if I need some assistance, I can get that guidance. Do you still have the contact? Are you still in touch with your alumni network, with your classmates at all, maybe? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you're one of those. <laughs> yeah, even though we didn't go to school, like we were in the same class, um, <clears throat> yeah, like you were part of that um, person that was there for me in so many ways. Um, but um, also, yeah, I, I still keep in touch with some of my 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 classmates. Um, and yeah, they're all over the world. Like nowadays it's easier to see what's everybody up to, you know, Instagram, Facebook, and yeah, you can see that they're all over the world and they've been very successful, um, having very successful careers. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. How about you, uh, Misael? Of course, you just graduated, but again, some people have returned to their country, some are staying local. There are different plans. So what is your perspective or how can you maximize those relationships and the people that have left and the ones that are here also local in Sacramento or in the state of California? Yeah, so while you're in school, there's different types of organizations you can attend. Um, 
Dave also made a basketball tournament. I'm not sure if everybody knows that we used to play basketball. I had a career in basketball as well. That's how I ended up in law school, through basketball. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes they held, they held a tournament at the university and I became really popular because I won this tournament. Like, oh, this guy's from Mexico and he's winning all the basketball games to the Americans. So I made a lot of friends. And all of a sudden, everybody just started inviting me to um, their barbecue, to their birthdays, and um, I, I'm just happy. And, and I, well, I just enjoy meeting new people. Like I don't close myself and judge the book by its cover. I really want to get to know people and with different types of backgrounds. And this really helped me um, to understand people in a, in a deeper level and. I have a person like a, a, a person I can study with, like a study buddy, and I have a person I can go like to the gym, or I can have another person that I can do something else, you know. And um, I mean, they, they're like they really like really improved my life, and I think it's also vice versa. And not only that, but in the legal field, like there, I could well, I, I would be able to get references through these people because like they they know how I am as well, and. And if they do actually need help, I would definitely know like who's who really need, needs this, and I can ref, refer them. And like, people are really grateful for this. That's beautiful. You know, making uh, you know long-lasting friends, friendships, networking, and really maximize those relationships that are very important. They are part of our experience, our cultural experience, our personal experience. Because as I said in the beginning, we change. We expand. We cannot ever be the same person that we, when we came in, right? In many ways. So it seems like we broaden our horizons and we are able to do all kinds of experiments and experiences throughout our journey here at McGeorge School of Law. I'm just, just admitted one student, a prospective student. His name is Diego. And he is from Mexico, by the way. He is, uh, I talked to him earlier. He is from Tijuana, I believe. Diego, do you hear us? Hola, Diego. Hello. Um, here we are. Hi. I'm sorry for being so late, but I I'm get I get caught up here at work, and it's a little bit tough sometimes to to get involved. Everything fine. Thank you, Adena, for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, welcome, Diego. You're speaking directly from Tijuana, Mexico. Is that right? I am. Yeah, that's correct. Perfect. I just want to say that we have two uh, wonderful guests. We have Misael. Uh, oh, perfect. He's from Mexico uh, originally, and he's here in today. He is at Stockton at the University of the Pacific joining us. And okay. uh, he graduated in 2022. Uh, he just sat for the California bar exam, and he has some work prospects coming his way. We also have uh, Carolina Rondon from Colombia. She is a licensed attorney here in California and works in Las Vegas. They have you know, graduated from our uh, law school and they're here to share tips and advice about this transformative journey. And you're welcome to um, ask your question since you are here, if there's any specific question would like to ask our panelists, um, or as I am speaking and guiding them throughout their experience, I'm also happy to, um, to you can send your a message via um, a chat box. I think you are at work and that's fine, no problem. You can send your, your text, um, your question via chat box, or you can also use the microphone if you can, if you can speak. So please feel free to, to join us as, as you wish. Okay, thank you, Elena. Thank you so much. And yes, actually, I, I was going to start, I will start my application process today. Like, um, I, um, hello, Carolina and, and Misael. They, they are here in the meeting, right? Yes, they are. Yeah. Oh, okay, hey, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't connect in the computer, so I'm in my phone and it's a little bit harder to see who is, oh, here we go. Um, so, I was, I took a class in, at McGeorge uh, University of the Pacific in 2016, uh, when I was in law school in Mexico. I took a class there called uh, Ca uh, California's Legislation. It was a summer that I took there in Sacramento. And during, the, during that process, they talked, they told us about the LLMs and the possibilities 
for Mexican lawyers, in, in my case, to become licensed attorneys in California. And it wasn't until recently that I met with actually an attorney that is a family of a family that went to McGeorge and that it's an attorney in Sacramento. And he, he told me that he that I should explore the possibility given that I'm bilingual and that I have, I mean, the opportunity to to pursue this this journey. So I'm I'm all ears for every suggestion and tips that I, I can get from from Carolina and Misael. Great. Um, so to you both, our panelists. He just said Diego said just he's going to start his application. Of course, the sooner the better. We have all the visa housing, all the steps in order for him to get here and be able to focus on his. Uh, his LLM. Now, of course, he's attending webinars like the one today to learn more and to be informed. Uh, that way, when he comes here, he can fully focus focus on his studies. Do you have any general tip as a prospective student when you guys were doing your homework, when you were looking for a school? You know, what were the important um, topics for you? What, for example, we're talking about scholarship, we're talking about a customized program. So what, what was important for you, you know, being in a state where it's a diverse state where your accent, it doesn't really matter because most of us, all of us have an accent, right? Is it to be able to be safe, to be welcomed to our community? You know, what, what went through your, your mind as you're preparing to come to a different country, another state, leaving everybody and everything behind to pursue a dream. We all know that everything has a price and I'm sure you have paid your price to be where you are. So based on this and your inspirational stories, what would you tell Diego who is now in this pursuit, you know, in the journey of becoming an LLM student here at McGeorge School of Law? Cut off whenever you're ready. Misael, did you want to go first? <laughs> well, it's because we're going in the Carol and Misael throughout the whole like shows. <laughs> you want to go first? Or? Well, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I was, because, so my story is a little bit different because when I came to my church, I was already in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So, um, I went to Sacramento to learn English. So before going to Majors, I was studying English at a University of California. They have an ELL program, and um, that's how I found out. Uh, find out. Uh, found out about Majors, and um, um, so to be honest, like I didn't really think about going farther. I was like, this seems to be like a good school. The campus was really pretty, um, but also I do have to say um, the financial situation was also like a big thing for me. And Mac George did offer me uh, a, a great scholarship and because <laughs> otherwise it would be really, really hard for me to just pursue the master's degree because um, it's not only what well, you have to pay for them for the tuition, but you know, books and living and everything. So the financial um aspect of it was a great it was a big um a big uh aspect for me to consider when choosing schools. I like that you're bringing this up because Mac George, we you know we are a private institution and we have generous, very generous donors. In other words, we are able to issue scholarships uh, up to 50%, depending on you know, the committee, how much they allocate to each student. Um, but we makes it, it makes it very um, feasible for students like us that have come from other countries to be able to attend an LLM program. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate what you're saying about the scholarship. Plus, if you compare the cost of living in California, right, in Sacramento or San Francisco, Los Angeles, depending on the big metropolis, the bigger the city, the more expensive is going to be. This is true for anywhere in the world. You need to take that into consideration while you're preparing your budget, your budget, right? To make sure that you can stay here and have a good experience. 
Misael, how about you? When you were getting ready to come to McGeorge, you were already here or not, what was important for you to understand and to know before you committed to this very high um, investment? There is return on investment. We know that now. But how was that process for you to get ready emotionally, physically, mentally, you know, intellectually to come and, you know, and do an LLM program? Yes. Um, well, first of all, well, in Mexico, I was reaching my, my limit. I was already practicing like around three years. Obviously, I started practicing before I actually graduated because that was one of the prerequisites to graduate, like working in a law firm for around six months or seven months or so. And I was getting really involved in law and I was thinking, well, like my limit, according to the speed I'm growing here, it's going to be like this X amount, right? But if I go to the U.S., there's like way much more levels I could probably rise to. And I also saw the, I did my like my self-assessments of whether I should pursue this degree or not. But it definitely gives you way much more um, than, than negative things. You know, obviously one of the financial investments you have to um, make is the economic one, as Carolina was mentioning, that's that for me, that was one, one of the most um, challenging at that point, because, it's, you know, if you change the vessel to U.S. currency, it's like a lot. And then, you know, you also have to contemplate that you're not going to be working, you're going to be a full time student. So it's just like spending, like renting, like everything, you know, everything adds up, like books, tuition. And so you really got to look forward to this. But fortunately, I also obtained a, a scholarship that did help. But throughout the, the course, I did a lot of research on more like loans and, you know, a lot of people, they will, a lot of people will tell you what they know, but that does not mean that that's the result. You know, that's not really what's going on. If you just research more and more and more, you'll find out that there's way much more things out there. There's these also um, loans for international students, um, especially for law students. So they're not really given to people that come and study English at the U.S., but they're more focused in with people with higher degrees like an LLM like us. So if you were to have like a financial struggle, you would have you would also have this option to get a loan. Um, the loan I've calculated was at 10 percent. I applied for it and it was there. I just had to sign a paper, but I didn't take it because I didn't need it. I just had to like like in another option just in case my plan A failed. Like I'll have plan B and then I also have plan C. And then I also sent letters to get more um, money from other um, people that uh, give you um, more like grants so you can study. And then there's also other ways that you can get money. Um, there's, I mean, there's a lot of ways, but if you're more interested, I will be more than have, um, happy to send you all the information. So you have like less of a burden on the economic side and you can really focus on your studies. So I, I already, I already did all that research. So I'm just, I'm just, I will just pass it down and, and I'm, somebody doesn't have to stress so much as I did, but I'm um, definitely, it's really going to help you out, especially in Mexico. I also had an interview with uh, Denton's company, with a big company. And they're established there in Guadalajara, and they have different offices. And if you're bilingual as well, they they offer you um, a job there. But obviously, you also want to keep your options open, and you want to have interviews, and obviously see for the best interest in, in yourself, right? Yes. Um, so that said, um, I also um, went to Berkeley. Um, um, Stanford, but these are more uh, pricey institutions, even the, the living costs is there. So if you were to get the money, it's still even more, you know, and you just want to get the degree and, and why at least from my perspective, like climb the ladder, you know, um, uh, don't you don't want to jump to level seven and, and from step two, you know, <laughs> you, want, you want to take your pace and put your good faith effort into it. Um, and definitely with George's it's like um, they really they really help you out a lot. They, like they really have all the resources and all the programs, and they really guide you really well. Yeah. Oh, they, 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 
Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much to to the both of you for for the generous and extensive suggestions and tips that I I just received. Actually, I feel that I'm pretty set on my decision to go to McDorch for a variety variety of reasons. One of them was what Adriana was saying about living in Sacramento in comparison to living in LA or living in San Diego, which is here are, are my neighbor um, mm -hmm. from Tijuana. And I feel like Sacramento also is a little bit more isolated from the distractions of big yeah. cities and it's more out in nature and close to things like that. And for me personally, from my experience in 2016, when I did my summer summer classes there in at McGeorge, I also felt like the, camp the campus was beautiful. The classrooms were great. And yeah, the, the staff there, the faculty, teachers, de deans, all of them seem to be um, always for the students, trying to help, our, help the students to go to the next level, get extra information, more research. And I don't know, I felt pretty comfortable there for, for that summer. And now that um, this other person has come up, Uh, reaching out and telling me also that I could probably start um, preparing for the bar exam with him. And so, yeah. And from the financial side, I have a cousin who did this journey, but in a, he's an um, aero, aero engineer, aerospatial engineer. And yeah, he has told me the same about uh, reaching out for every uh, fund or scholarship that I can get, most of them. You just have to show, not show up, but to write the letters or do the requirements that they ask you. And more, more times than not, they're willing to help you and to give out the money. So I will definitely look into every, every scholarship or fund that I can get my hands on. So like, like you guys said, I don't have to worry too much about uh, the, the financial side and I can just focus on, on the studies. Perfect. And uh, Diego, we did record, we are recording obviously, and I'll send you so you can see the beginning, you can watch the beginning of our conversation because there are a lot of good tips and advice for you as well. And, Thank you. Um, Thank you. Oh, and so, so, sorry, Adriana. Uh -huh. and, and yeah, Misael, uh, I would definitely appreciate um, the, the information. If you have it already broke, broken down, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to have stress-free information <laughs> in my hand, at my hands. I will also take it because, um, <laughs> always, I mean, I don't know if I'm going back to school, but they, there's always people asking about and that's about going coming to school to the United States and that's great information. Yeah. So if you can also send it to me. <laughs> I will connect you all. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we're, we're getting close to the end and I would like to open the space for Carol and Misael. Your final words, you know, from, from the heart you know, for all the, the times, the difficult times, the happy times, being part of a family, né? McGeorge family, you are now part of the alumni family as well of our university, you know, um, looking back and reflecting on your journey um, with highs and lows, which is life, uh, but more highs than lows, I'm sure. And you're here today sharing your inspirational story with others. Any final words to our students, please? Um, I would say um, it's gonna be hard, but try to have a balance between mm -hmm. studying hard and enjoying everything. Um, I know there is people that will come to do the LLM with a more serious intention, but at least I don't know if that works, uh, if that's what, like how it is still but in my class we also had um summer students well no like exchange students mm -hmm. and of course when you're an exchange student you just want to have more fun to study hard i was that too um but as an llm um you're thinking more seriously about your life you know um so yeah it's gonna it's not gonna be easy it's not supposed to be easy because not everybody gets this far um <laughs> And it takes hard work, but at the same time, take advantage of 
the city, the fact that there is like um, Sacramento, if San Francisco is closed, Lake Tahoe is closed, there is so much nature around, there is so much to do outside of the city, inside of the city, it's also like there is things to do and take advantage of um, the fact that my church does feel like a family away from home. Um, and that's, that's, that's something that I would always appreciate of Mark George and the people that, um, came, like helped me. Um, and that's why I'm always so honored to come back and do these panels because, um, there was so much that was poured into me that I will also do it for other, for other person. Um, what I said it before, I said it already. Go to the take advantage of all of the tools that Majors give you. Go to the um, uh, office hours. Um, try to be known by your professors. Um, use the career career center. I used it and it was really helpful. Um, they help you to do your CVs, your ser resumes. There is um there there was I don't know if still is there is um a job fair. For international students, I also took advantage of that. There is going to be a lot of things going on. There is going to be a lot of things going on. Um, but um, yeah, we said it already. You're not going to be the same person after this experience, and that's great. Like that's that's the, the purpose of all of this. So work hard, but also enjoy it. Like enjoy, it. make friends. Um, enjoy the family that my church offers. Beautiful balance. I thank, love that's the key word. I love that. I don't think thank you, thank, thank you so thank you so much, Carolina. And yeah, I, once again, I truly I am sorry for um, joining this late. Work and get crazy here. I know it's everybody gets has a super busy schedule, but I joined as soon as I could, and I I appreciate and I value your your time and thank you for your words. Rizal. Um, yes, I uh, follow up on what Carolina said. Definitely, it's gonna change you. It's gonna definitely gonna demand more from you. And when you're challenged personally, it's like you know when you put pressure into a diamond. That's when the diamond comes out. That's that's basically what this program is. And I mean, it's definitely worth it. I don't I don't regret like anything that I've done. You know, you coming from Mexico, there's a lot of going on. You know, the culture is completely different. There's a lot of parties, a lot of, but you, know, I, you, you, you can have fun in Mexico, but when you come to um, California to study, it's like the complete flip side. And, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. You, you're you're going to have a lot of opportunities and it's, you know, a lot of people from Mexico don't actually come and pursue this, these types of programs because it, language is a huge barrier for, for most of the lawyers. And if you dominate the, the language, I, I mean, you speak it well, um, you should definitely take advantage of, of this um, additional um, law degree and try to also connect with, with people. Some people are just a little bit more like nervous or what they might think. Like don't, sometimes we limit, lim limit ourselves in our own mind, stuff that's not even like real, you know, you just get out there talk, be empathetic with people, try to see what common grounds you have with or similar interests with these people and build up on that. Like you'll be surprised how much uh, people are willing to help. Obviously when you can help, obviously help because it's a win, well, try to make it a win-win scenario. And it makes your life way much easier and less stressful and people really help you out when you come with this approach. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Misael. Um, coming from obviously uh, a Mexican national perspective gives me, you don't know how much uh, confidence and comfort uh, listening a little bit of your of your testimony and about your experience at McGeorge. It really gives me a boost in confidence and um, the anxiety is a little bit uh, lower today hearing from from both of you, but especially from someone, someone from Mexico who understands the culture. Yeah. Thank you. And um, I, and I, and and I bet we'll stay in touch, uh, the the four of us. So I, I'm looking forward to 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 those to any communication between us. 
Beautiful. I believe I have the permission of all to make it this introduction. Yes. <laughs> I am beyond grateful for all of you, our special guests, alumni panels, panelists, for their time, for their yes. general time to be here and to share their experience with others because, you know, uh, the mission goes on. We, we have the knowledge. We have had the privilege, the access to higher education. And we have the responsibility now to open doors, to share the knowledge that we all have acquired through, you know, uh, ups and downs, but we have been successful and we made it. And we are responsible. We are also inspiration to others that also have a dream to come and better their lives in so many levels. With that said, my friends, I consider you guys my friends. I want to say thank you. Muchas gracias for your time, for your dedication. And I look forward to hearing what comes more in your, in your future. We are connected and we are here to celebrate you. So thank you. Thank you so very much. We are connected and I hope to see you guys very, very soon.